Hello and welcome to Shelby TV's very first episode of Shelby DIY, a craft show where you learn how to do it yourself, everything from hand painting to refurbishing. In today's episode, we have Patty Henning, the owner of Fabulous Finishes right here in Shelby Township, and she's going to teach us how to do some festive fall painting. So let's step into the studio, roll up our sleeves, and find our inner artist for this week's DIY. Hi, I'm Patty Henning and I'm at the back workroom of our Fabulous Finishes studio. And today we're going to show a couple different processes that are actually kind of fun for the holidays. One is gilding, um, which is a leafing process that can be done with like gold, silver, or copper leaf. And the other one is, uh, it's a foiling transfer uh, where you can take these different sheets of foil that we have here in the store and you can transfer them onto any kind of surface. It kind of works the same way that the, the gilding does. So we're going to do both of those today um, on a number of different items like hardware that you might have that's really old and you don't want to use it anymore um, to these plastic little pumpkins that you might have that are left over and you want to make your table look a little more festive even to you know like these little uh, 99 cent um, little plastic pumpkin things that you want to dress up. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the, the gilding pumpkins. And these here have already been base coated. They need to be um, sealed wall with like a primer sealer. And the paint that we use here is, it, it's a reclaimed paint. And it's a fabulous paint where it has everything built into it. So it's like kind of a whippy paint. It's really big for all surfaces. It sticks to anything without, you know, sanding and stripping. And it'll stick to this plastic pumpkin as well as seal it up when it dries. So the first process, if I'm going to put um, any kind of leafing or foiling down, is that I need to get a base coat on my surface and let it dry real well. So it's kind of just like painting that you're used to. You would paint your surface up like this pumpkin here, which is what we've done to all of these ahead of time. Okay, and same thing with the hardware. I'm just going to use a different color because I like to use a dark color on hardware. And this is the same paint, but the color is called mocha, so it's like a dark brown. And your hardware, you would clean it well with like, you know, a simple green or a spick and span. And then you would just paint one coat onto your hardware and get everything so that none of it's showing like this. And you would let that dry. And if some of your original finish is showing through, that's okay because the base is still there. So you just need a sealed base. It doesn't have to be solid dark brown. You don't have to do multiple coats. Um, even it sticks to things like these little ceramic knobs that might be a little outdated and you're going to throw them out. You can repurpose them by painting over them, making them any color that you want. So today we'll do these with the foil. Okay. Once you get your base coat on and it's dry, you can move on to your next step, which is you need to apply um, a sticky size. It's a, it's a sizing material that allows, when it comes to tack, your leaf to adhere as well as um, your foil. And what we did with this big pumpkin was, I didn't even tape it, but you could take like your household tape and run your tape lines if you're a little shaky with your lines. Um, I didn't really feel the need to be too particular. And the sizing looks kind of like a milky solution. And it will go onto your surface. I'll do it on the hardware first so you can see the color of it. It'll go onto your surface and it'll look kind of like an iridescent blue. And then when it reaches its tack, it will change to a clear. And the way you can tell that it comes to tack is uh, you can 
test your knuckles on it and it'll make a little pop sound. So when these are ready, we'll do that for you so you can, you can see what I'm talking about. So this one has its size on it. This little guy will get his size. I'm only going to do the front, not the back. Okay, and we'll even do this, this old chrome. We'll do half of it so we can see the difference on one piece when it's done. Okay, and you don't have to be real particular, but with the sticky size, you need to make sure every part of the surface is covered. Otherwise, your foil or your leaf is not going to adhere. Um, if that happens, you can just go back with a toothpick and you could put a little bit or you could take a Q-tip so it's not like you ruined your project. Okay, so for these pumpkins, I just kind of followed these fat lines down. And applied the sizing. Maybe we'll just do a couple of them so that we don't have to do the whole pumpkin. Okay. And the sticky size doesn't take long to set. It'll probably take about 15 minutes. And then you do have quite a while to adhere whatever you're going to stick to it, whether it's your foil or a leaf. Now this one, this little polka dot friend here, um, what I did was the, the cream is the painted, the painted gourd, let's say. And for me to get the polka dots on it, what I did was I used just simple like Avery labels, the little round Avery labels. You can kind of think outside the box and use anything that you want. And I just stuck them onto the, oh, can't get them. Oh, he's right here. Okay, I just stuck them onto the pumpkin wherever I wanted. So I can make them real polka dotty or I can just put a couple. And here maybe I'll just do two since it's taking me so long to get the, the dots off. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll apply the size everywhere else and when I get by those dots I kind of just bounce it over them so that I don't worry about it oozing underneath. They do stick, but sometimes I'm always nervous that they're not going to stick completely. Okay, so then you would just put that sticky size everywhere else. And this is a fun little project you can do for your kids. If you have smaller kids, all the products are water soluble. They're not toxic. It's water cleanup. There's no smell. Um, the next pumpkin I'm going to do is just this one. He's a little bit different because he shows a little bit of stenciling where you don't have to gild or foil the whole pumpkin. So we'll do this one up quick. Just a little bit on each side. And the one thing about the sizing, when you open your container, you know, put it on a little plate or a little dish to work it. But then when you close your container, make sure you really clean the lid well because you won't get it open. It's really, really tacky. Um, and the shelf life is really good. It'll last until you use it all up. Um, now this big guy here, I based him in the brown like we did with the hardware, the mocha. And what I'm going to do on this one is we'll demo the foil, which uh, this is a foiling transfer that went on here. Um, so that's what this, this big guy is. So you'll be able to see the sizing a little better. And I'm just going to make sure I get my whole surface. Sometimes when I do these projects, I don't do the very bottom because it's hard to dry them. Um, and nobody's going to see the bottom anyway. If you really want to do your whole item, then it's good to just do part of it, let it dry, and then flip it over and paint the other side. And then when you dry it, you can stick it in like a bucket or a, a cup where it stands up and it's not having to sit. We'll do the whole guy here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't recommend doing this on live pumpkins or gourds because they won't last forever. Um, if you're going to do it and just have it uh, work for your season and then dispose of it, that's fine, but they aren't going to be able to be stored for the next season. Okay, I am going to take a short break uh, so we can dry these. It'll take about 15 minutes and then we'll be back to do the foiling and the leafing. ANA Recycling Center is Michigan's premier parts recycling center that saves you money while protecting the environment. We pay top dollar for late model junk cars, SUVs and trucks, all types, all models, both foreign and domestic. Search our online inventory to find used and refurbished parts. Need quick cash? Don't throw away your junk because your scrap metal is worth money. Selling has never been easier with our easy drive-on, drive-off scale. Visit ANA Recycling Center today. Hi, my name is Cheryl Steinhurst. My husband and I are owners of Steinies Tavern. We're located on the northwest corner of 25 Mile and Shelby Road. We offer a unique dining experience from our restaurant to our off-site catering. Everything we make is from scratch. We utilize Michigan-made products whenever possible. We're open seven days a week. We offer daily lunch and dinner specials, and we carry the most craft beers on draft in all of Macomb County. So plan on coming out to Steinies Tavern where you come for the food and stay for the party. Okay, so we're back. These have dried. Um, you can either dry them, let them dry naturally. It'll take about 15 minutes, or you can fast dry it with a blow dryer, and really it probably takes about a minute or two. You can tell when the size is ready, uh, because on this one, if you remember, it went on kind of milky, and now it's clear. It's just kind of a shiny surface. When you're painting on something that you can't tell the color, um, there's like a popping sound when a size is ready um, for tack and if you just kind of put your knuckles on it and you should hear like a little pop sound, um, then you know you're ready for the next step. Um, so what we're going to do is first we'll work with uh, the leaf and we'll do this little guy that had the polka dots on it. And the leaf sheets, uh, you can get the leaf anywhere. We have it here as well from um, Caramel Colors and they come in like packs of 25 typically. They call it a book and it's either gold, silver, or copper and today we're going to use just the gold. And the sheets are like real flimsy um, and you just kind of lay them on your surface and it'll stick right away and you can use your fingers or you can use a soft brush whatever you choose to kind of get that sheet to just adhere right down to the sticky surface. Now you can either you know take it and wrap it like that or you can just hold a piece in your hand and kind of you know move it around and create more of an organic look. There's no real right way or wrong way to apply the leaf. You just need to realize that when it does touch down and stick, you're not going to get it back up. It's there. Um, any other spots that are like still open, you just take these little bits that come off and you reposition them so that you can cover your whole surface. And if you get a spot that just doesn't take the leaf and it remains that base color, and you want it covered, what you can do is just get your size back out with a little artist brush or like I said, a little Q-tip or even a toothpick. And you can put a little dot there and then let it dry and then cover it. So it's kind of a pretty messy process. But the leaf is actually the most brilliant of your metallics. So when you see like a uh, old picture frame that is gold. Usually the leafing is the most brilliant and then the foil actually gives the the next nicest metallic sheen and then it kind of works itself down to like metallic paints. Okay. So for the most part my guys covered. Now I'm going to take just a, a dry cloth and just kind of burnish him and get those little pieces off. Polish them up nice. Okay. And then uh, you could use like a little toothpick. I have a little pick that I use, but I don't know where I put it. And these little stickers here, you'd have to find the edge and peel your sticker back up. 
And that's how you create that cool little design. So you could use squares, you could, you could even use like uh, little shapes for kids or Halloween shapes. Okay. So that's this guy. Now if you wanted to antique him and get him like a little bit uh, more richer in color, you could put a toner on it that we have. But these we left kind of bright and festive um, because they're on that nice white color. Um, this one here, all we did was we did a full stripe and then we did like a little stencil on the front that I'll be able to show you. So this one again, you just, whoop, you just put that leaf down. And you can, you can use multiple colors. You don't just have to use one. Um, but I think it looks the nicest when it just stays one solid color. Okay, so there's this guy. I use this leaf a lot, even on furniture when I'm doing like a, a piece that has really pretty raised legs. I like to treat the legs like their feet and I dress them up and they're really pretty if they're either gold or silver leafed, depending on the piece. Uh, I've done this on faucets in my powder room before and it holds up really nicely. You just have to make sure you put a polyurethane over it. Um, I think because of the sticky size, it's so strong. And then it has the leaf over it, and it has that nice base. Um, it's, it's quite durable. OK, so there's that little guy. Gives you the idea. OK. And then we have this big guy. Here, if I want it to go fast, I can just put those sheets, lay them right on there and use my brush to move it. Now, the, I think they call them skewings, all the pieces that fall off. Oh, I have a little bit of a bleed there. All these pieces that are falling off, you can save those and put them in a little box and then reuse them when you're doing future projects where they're like the little pieces that can fill in all those little spots so that you don't waste a lot. The pieces that are really, really small, I, I don't save those. But be prepared to make a little bit of a mess because it really does kind of go everywhere. This is a process that can be done on walls as well. Um, trim work. People have done like uh, their crown molding in little decorative rooms or when you get like those uh, the little nooks and coves that are built out. It would be hard for probably a homeowner to do like a whole uh, living room of a, of a trim or a wall. Leave that for maybe somebody that that does it all the time but you most definitely could do it on just a little accent spot. Okay, so that's like this guy. Now that doesn't have to be top coated with anything. Um, like I said, you can put like a tinted wax on it if you want to age it or give it a different antiquing. Uh, but if you like it to stay a little brighter and shinier, you can leave it just like this. Um, the hardware kind of works the same way, except it's smaller, so it goes quicker. And this, you can either cover all of it or you can leave a little bit of that brown coming through where it looks like cracks. I'm just going to jam it all on there. Let's see what it looks like. Use your brush to smash it in all those little cracks and crevices. Nobody will know that this was your old chrome towel bar. Now you remember when I 
moved into one of our old houses and there was all kinds of brass hardware that I didn't like and we removed all of it and put it in a garage sale. And then later when I saw everything that could be done with hardware, it just bummed me out because it could have saved a lot of money. Okay, so there's this little guy. Now if I do like a little bit of an antiquing on him just to show you, instead of leaving it so bright. Um, Caramel has a product, it's called Toner, and it's, kind of, it's a fabulous product. Um, we get a lot of people that have fallen in love with it, and they use it even for things that haven't been painted, that like existing lamps that they have, or previous painted frames at their house. Um, it's a one color fits all. It's water-based, again, it doesn't smell. It's not a stain, but it's not a glaze. It's kind of uh, a mix, it stays workable so that you can put it on something and you don't have to worry that you're not going to be able to get it off. But it's just the perfect color to antique something. So I put it on my surface and then I just take a dry cloth and I just lightly remove it. And if I want to keep it in those dark, the cracks and crevices I can or I can work to get those out. But you see the difference that it makes. It just kind of gives it a nice soft. So if we look at the before and after on this guy, there's quite a difference. There you go. Look at that. And again, the leaf is in copper, silver, and then gold. That's about the only three that it comes in. Okay, now on the same size that's been set, look at that, I got a little piece of that. Oop, gotta get it off, okay. On these little tacky ones, we're gonna do, um, not leaf, but we're gonna show the, this foiling. And it's a pretty cool um, product. We just brought it into the store this last year and our customers are really enjoying it. Um, partly because there's a lot of fun patterns, and maybe we can show those later at the break. Um, but I've grabbed two. This one is kind of a punky cheetah print, and this one is my favorite. It's just kind of like a um, patinaed copper. And the way the foil works is you take these sheets, the one side is dark, and then the front side's the pattern. And you would think that the pattern needs to go down on the sides, but it's actually the opposite. You need to put the black side down. And when I have my sheet, I actually kind of bunch it up first. I don't just leave it, it gives it a little more interest. Okay, so I have this. And I'm gonna take my surface that's ready with the tack and I'm gonna lay the dark side down, okay? And I'm just gonna kinda have it hug my surface. I'm gonna do this. And then you need to take a real coarse uh, little scrubby brush, okay? And what you do is you just do like a transferring. You're kinda scrubbing around. And you can kinda tell when it's lifting because you can see that the, the backing is kind of whitish, like a wax paper, so you can see that it's probably already transferred and this probably hasn't. Um, I did this pumpkin yesterday and it was, I had to work to get it into those little grooves of the pumpkin. But you just scrub it around. And these, the foils are actually really nice. Again, we've, we've seen them done on furniture tops. Um, it'll actually stick to glass. Okay, now see where it's taken and then the areas that it hasn't. So I'll just take this. I can see where there's black. I still have pattern left. And I'll lay it back down and I'll continue the process. But you can use this on metal. You can use it on glass. You can use it pretty much on any surface. You can create art with it. You just need to make sure that you have a well-sealed prime surface first. Like I wouldn't do this on a piece of furniture. I wouldn't just paint the size and then put this on it. We have had people that have done this on uh, their countertops. Actually, the one gal that works here did their laundry room counters. She's got a lot of pictures online that show like the before and after. 
projects that are pretty fun. Okay, but you get the idea. You just have to kind of keep working it around the bigger your surface. Like this is a little awkward because it's round. But if you're doing like a, a counter or a coffee table top, you would just, it's easier because you can just lay it flat and get your scrubbing going and you lift it and then you put, put it back down again. Okay, so the hardware with the cheetah print, we'll do a couple of those pieces. This little guy was set, so we'll crunch that up. We'll put that same pattern so that we can see the pattern. Give it a little scrub. And then it transfers. And you can leave any amount. If you want to leave some of your base coming through, like if you were to base coat it with the black reclaim, um, you can leave some of that showing through and it looks pretty cool. Or you can just try to get a full transfer of your foil. These are real popular for like the kids' furniture right now. If I did these though, I would do the back. We just didn't so we could hold them. Okay. That's quite different than that little ceramic guy we started with. And then this little handle here, kind of awkward because you have that flip, but I'm just going to put it right down on the whole thing. And I'll put it on the surface. Give it a nice scrub. We've got these little scrubby brushes here too for a couple bucks if you don't have something. The little wire bristles are, are actually work the best. Okay, and then you just need to move it around to get it to reach everything. And then lift it and keep moving in. And these, if I was doing hardware, once this was on and set, I would actually put like a polyurethane over it just to protect it if you're using it as hardware. That makes it washable and resistant to your body oils from your hands. Okay, so you get the idea. And then this, you can kind of look at your, your foil or, or the foil that's left, and you can see where you've used your pattern. So this sheet to me still has quite a bit of use left, so I'll, I just kind of fold it up and I save it for the next project. Um, I only throw it out when most of it's off my sheet because it stays good. Okay. So that covers the foiling and the leafing that you can do with just a simple base coat that's a primer sealer, a sticky size that'll adhere your leaf or your foil, and then just doing your transferring. Um, you can do other cool things, like I said, if you antiqued that hardware, that's one thing. You can take that same toner. It's a really nice product for stenciling. Um, with this little guy, I just took like a simple stencil. Even on a round surface, you're not going to be able to tape it or, or stick it down. But, when you stencil, you just barely get any on your brush. And you can kind of, if I wanted to do that big white spot, I could just hold it. And I'm going to start at the top and just kind of bang it. And then as I move down, I just move my pattern. So it's not even stuck to the pumpkin. But because you're hitting it like directly up and down, It'll still transfer your design, which is kind of fun. Okay, like that kind of thing. So there's all kinds of options you can do with uh, the products if you have a little bit left over, that kind of thing. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use these base coats. Um, it's a different base coat than the Reclaim, which was what went on all of these pumpkins. That's like a smooth primer. There's a sealer in it. Uh, these other paints from them don't have a sealer um, in them, but they're a different paint where, if you see, that they're a little bit thicker. It's kind of like whippy peanut butter. Okay, so it's not what we're used to as a paint, but there's a million things you can do with them. And the one thing today that we were just going to show is 
you know, regardless of your surface, these paints stick to everything from mirror to glass to metal to plastic to cabinets that have 80 million layers of varnish or stain or laminate cabinets, countertops. Um, the paint is on the tile entry of our store and we walk on it every day. It's just a fabulous paint. And if you had something like old candlesticks that you weren't going to use anymore, they were the wrong color and you wanted to repurpose them, um, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, getting a brush and just working at slapping it on your, your item. And this paint, because it's so thick, you can cover, like I did it here where I covered these just in one coat by applying it really thick, and it'll take a while to dry, so we did everything up ahead of time. Um, I mean, you could even leave it that thick. It would take a long time to dry, but it would look really cool when it's done. It just has a lot of unique purposes. It can take something um, that's as simple as like these little plastic 99 cent pumpkins and really kind of create like a cool enough, you know, if you were going to do a party or a table display and you wanted the pumpkin face, um, you know, it, it's a pretty neat way. Added the little jewels in the eyes because we do a lot of that here on our furniture. Um, you can still do that on like these little pumpkins. I mean, you can paint anything you want. You can water this paint down, you can brush it thinner if you want, you can slap it on and leave it thicker. Okay, so we painted up a lot of this stuff. Okay. It comes in I think uh, 14 colors. You can mix additional colors by taking, you know, uh, two colors and making your own version, let's say black and white, you can make a gray. They come in eight ounce sizes, quarts. Um, let me see what else did I have. Oh, okay, so that was the first layer, okay, of these. And then this pumpkin here, this was the first layer that I did and it really didn't cover well. Um, same thing, like when you're painting it on the surface, you know, this one's a little drier, I had the lid open. But it's like just really leaving it, doesn't matter how you get it on, it can kind of be messy. Um, but on the front what I did was, I did a second coat and I used a little bit of water. I had like a little spritzer where I spritzed some water and then I just moved it around so I could get like a solid coverage on it. And that's kind of with all the surfaces that we paint. The first coat will go on and off and it doesn't look very nice like this and it scares people. But you know the second coat when you put it on it doesn't take much paint and you can just add a little bit of water to it and it fills everything right in. So this is like our little guy. You can add a little bit of water to him and make it move better. And see his face, which I thought was pretty cool. And this color, this color is called Bayberry, and I never liked it when it first came out. I thought it looked like mint ice cream, and I still don't like it, this color. But when you put the toner on it, that same brown stuff that we stenciled with and antiqued the gold leaf with, it makes it a really cool color, and I love this. I don't like this, so this guy's going to need some work when he dries. And the other thing that I like to do with those paints, and we have them displayed a lot in the store, and people will ask all the time how it's done. Um, these textured base coats are what I use when I'm going to stencil anything that has dimension on either like glass or mirror. So if you have like old mirrors, if you have old pieces of glass that you're just going to throw out, you can really kind of create them, create like a decorative backdrop. And with these paints, all you need to do is just, you would need a stencil, and I usually tape it down. I don't like to use the sticky adhesive because it'll leave a tackiness on the, the glass. So we can just do this. And you take like just a bendy little cheap credit card, okay? And you take some of your thick paint and you put it on your edge like that. 
and then you hold your fingers down, you kind of bend it, you're not straight up like this. And you're only going to make one swoop past your stencil, like you can't go back and forth or you're going to push it underneath. And you just kind of put it right on top and you glide it across. And then when you lift it, it creates a really cool element and it'll take a while to dry because it is thick and when that dries you're not getting it off. I mean we have to use razor blade um, to get the stuff off glass surfaces so it makes it really nice because you actually can Windex it as well. Okay, so that's the thick paint. What we're going to do is we're going to take another break again so that some of this stuff can dry so we can just do the last uh, toning steps on it and then we'll be back. ANA Recycling Center is Michigan's premier parts recycling center that saves you money while protecting the environment. We pay top dollar for late model junk cars, SUVs and trucks, all types, all models, both foreign and domestic. Search our online inventory to find used and refurbished parts. Need quick cash? Don't throw away your junk because your scrap metal is worth money. Selling has never been easier with our easy drive-on, drive-off scale. Visit ANA Recycling Center today. Hi, my name is Cheryl Steinhurst. My husband and I are owners of Steinies Tavern. We're located on the northwest corner of 25 Mile and Shelby Road. We offer a unique dining experience from our restaurant to our off-site catering. Everything we make is from scratch. We utilize Michigan-made products whenever possible. We're open seven days a week. We offer daily lunch and dinner specials, and we carry the most craft beers on draft in all of Macomb County. So plan on coming out to Steinies Tavern where you come for the food and stay for the party. Okay, so we are back with our dried items. Um, I laid some of the paint on because that paint is so thick. If I want to do one layer and leave it real textural, um, there will be pockets that can get real gooey. So I would say give it at least a day drying time. Um, not something that would be easily dried with a blow dryer. Um, but we'll be careful with um, our application of the toner today. But all of these surfaces are dry now. Um, if you were doing like a piece of furniture or a cabinet, you can take a little piece of sandpaper and lightly sand this just to take the chalky feel off of it. But for all of these elements, I don't need to do that. And again, I take my toner out. And especially with this, this bayberry color that I don't like until it has this on it, I'm going to brush this on everything. And the toner goes a long way. I don't put it on real heavy like this because I'm going to wipe most of it off. Um, so I like to just put it on sparingly. We'll move some of that onto that guy. I mean, we do sell products here, but our intent isn't to make you waste it and have to keep buying more. Um, so here's your little toned guy, and then you have to have a lot of dry rags. These are my favorite, like these little terry rags. And I like to just take my hand and kind of wrap them, and I lightly just blot him. And see how the toner's staying into all those cracks and crevices? I can leave it any way I want. I can leave it heavy like that. I cannot even rag him off and leave him real brown, or I can wipe them pretty pretty good and just leave it a lighter antiquing and you can see it still changes the color even if I wipe it hard like that. I usually like to leave it a little a little grungy and when these dry they do dry back pretty matte so if you want an extra sheen on them you can use any of your favorite top coats. We have several here as well but any top coat will work to add some sheen to your items. So same thing, I'm going to put it on this candlestick here, and I like to get things done quickly, so I just smash it on there. It doesn't have to be daintily painted on because it'll take a long time to do it that way, and by the time you get to the top, this might already start to be setting in. So I usually tell people just really try to move your brush around and push it. It doesn't have to be real perfect. You just want to make sure you get it everywhere. Okay, get that. I'm going to put it on this guy. Mm -hmm. 
usually if I do the base coating, I'll wait till the next day to do my toner. I try not to do things the same day just so that I know the paint's good and dry. Okay, and again, I'll take my rag just lightly wipe that one around. So if I had mis mismatched candlesticks and they didn't look good anymore and I had, couldn't use them, I could always just paint them all the same color. And even though they're different heights and shapes and styles, they would all look pretty cool together. Okay, this guy. I'm going to be careful wiping because I know he's still wet. Okay, but you can see how that toner really changes the color. I love that. It looks like old leather. And then we got the little pumpkin. I'll put some on him. And again, this is safe for your kids. You don't have to worry. I mean, you don't have to wear gloves. I usually don't, but you can to protect your hands. I'm getting all messy. And wipe it off him. Make them all grungy. And if I have little spots where I have a hard time getting it out, I can just take a little dry brush and I can just, I call it stippling, where you just kind of bounce that darkness out. You can do it on any of your items if you want. Okay, and last but not least is this, this pumpkin. I'm just going to scrub this on them. And I would brush it on the whole pumpkin, but he's not done yet. So we'll just do the part that we completed. Okay. Nobody would know that was a, a orange pumpkin. Okay, and I'm just going to lightly blot him. Or again, I said I could wipe him, and you can see the difference. I'm just going to softly I'm gonna leave it in his little eyeballs and stuff. Okay. There you go. So there's your pumpkin. And when he dries, you could add little crystals to him. You can do any of that stuff. Or you can just leave them like that. Stuff a little bow in them. There you go. And that's pretty much the process when you want to take like the textured base coats. Uh, those are the ones we just covered. They come in 14 colors. We have them available at the store. Um, they're very thick paints. They adhere to everything. Um, I tell the customers that's the one that is usually my go-to paint. If um, I know so a surface is really going to get a lot of uh, beating up, like young kids, uh, everyday kitchen table surface. Um, or the tile, like we go over tile, we go over marble tile. Um, but it's a nice paint. You can put it on thick or thin. We did a lot of thick applications here today. Um, the toner is just a staining glaze you can use over top. You don't have to do that. And then the sister paint, the Reclaim, it's a, a thinner paint, but it has uh, other additives in it where it has a sealer built in. And that makes a great base for putting like um, any gilding leaf or foils over top. Um, you can find all the products here at Fabulous Finishes. We're open Tuesday through Saturday. And um, we have a website as well where we share a lot of projects that are uh, before and afters that we get from customers that are fun. And um, I hope you enjoyed our uh, little demo today and hope to see you soon. And there you have it, the beautiful finished product. That's all the time we have for this episode of Shelby DIY. A special thanks to Patty Henning and Fabulous Finishes located on Van Dyke in between 23 and 24 Mile. Until next time, I'm your host, Katie Shimatero, and remember, don't throw away today what you can repurpose tomorrow.